guess what idiot just mounted a GoPro to his RC car? <laughs> Me. A few minutes later. As you've seen, the RC car crash a lot a couple of seconds ago. Most of those crashes were caused by part failures. So, I would like to start off with the design of the full body. Now, it's nothing crazy as you can see. It consists of a battery and the ESC housing and a triangular coupler. It's a very simple design that utilizes two carbon fiber rods to hold it together, besides the bubblegum and the wish. But, here comes the fun part. The problems. Huh. So, after like 20 minutes of assembling, which is kind of sad because I built this myself, I ran into one issue, and that is the printing tolerance. And basically, this hole in here, right here, here, right here, here, right there. I can't work the thing. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to resort to. Oh shit, my light just fell. There we go. And. Crap. Alright, well, we'll be without a light. Now that I've successfully assembled it, here we go. Let's test this baby out. Okay, so once I popped open the gearbox, I noticed the issue was the motor shaft melted the gear center, causing it to slip as the motor spun. But not to worry, I designed a fix which included a set screw clamping down on the flat part of the shaft. This allows the gear to grip on more surface than just holding onto a small shaft. On a side note, I ran into another problem with my GoPro telemetry. Simplistically speaking, I wasn't able to put a speedometer on the recording. Let's begin. All right, let's restart this. So it takes a certain amount of time, distance and time to reach my max speed, which is B, all right? Before B, we don't care about, okay? Don't care. Once I reach my max speed, which is whoop, B, I'm going to start measuring it with a chalk line. So I'm going to say B starts at this point, which is drawn on a chalk line on the road that I'm going to be using to test. And point C is my end. End. It's, it's done. That's where I stop my timer. I'm going to be using my GoPro recording time starting, like, let's say I pass B. I start the timer. And once I pass C, I stop. And that's going to be my time. So let's just say it from point B to point C, it takes me 80 seconds. And the distance equals one mile. So I'm going to use the calculation velocity, which is V equals D, D divided by t which is velocity equals d which is distance divided by time so t is going to be 80 seconds so 80 s divided by oh sorry one mile divided by 80 seconds equals v which is 
0.0125, all right? That's what it equals, velocity is 0 0.0125. Now, to convert seconds to hours, you have to get 3,600 because how many seconds in an hour? 3,600. 60 seconds times 60 minutes, 3,600. So, basically, I'm going to have to multiply this. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is MPS, miles per second, times 3600, zero, zero, which should equal 45 miles an hour. Still not realistic because I'm... Ooh. I'm expecting like 30 miles an hour. Oh, that's that's four miles per hour. 45 miles per hour. Let's follow this line right here. So I'm going to say right here. And I want to get a little accuracy, so I'm just going to say I'm going to measure it. So, right over here should be good, right? Alright, so now let's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, about 22 meters. The first test that I've done, I began to realize that I had steering issues, not because I was a bad driver, but I went and added another line in the center, somewhere in the center, and it measured out to be about 37 feet. So I'll just go with 37 feet for my distance. And now to test it out. Now, so technically there will be three lines, but we're just gonna go with the first two. Ignoring the last one. This is where I will start the timer. This is the end. Now that I've had my fun, time to do math. So basically I got my distance and my time, which is basically one second. I mean, I'm not going to worry about the six frames, but this is a 60 frame footage. So it counts up to 60 and then it goes to a second. So it's at 54 frames. It took 54 frames to get my footage. <clears throat> and that's what, like 0 0.9, 0 0.95 of a second. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm just going to say it took one second and the distance like i told you it's roughly 37 uh feet which is in miles i put it into a calculator 0 0.00701 miles so i put that into a converter and from 37 feet it got me that much in miles <clears throat> So now to get my velocity, I just have to do D divided by T. T. No, there you go. Ah, uh, looks like a plus. Not anymore. Okay, it looks weird. Who cares? <clears throat> so 0 0.00701 
divided by one equals this. So I'm just gonna drop that down. And now I just got, cause this is now the velocity. So let me clean this up a little bit. Equals V, so V equals 0 0.00701. And basically it is M P S miles per second. Now to convert that to <clears throat> miles per hour, I just have to do times three six zero zero. There we go. And it is twenty five point two three six roughly. All right, that's the amount of miles per hour. Now, is this accurate? Nah, a little bit. Is it around that area? Yes, it's like I expected. 20, I mean, I expected it to go at least 30 miles an hour. Am I surprised? Not really. No. <clears throat> There's a lot of flaws in the design that I made. And I do plan on changing a couple of things in the next video, such as friction. That's the main one, actually. Friction, the size, and weight. So the car is kind of bulky and heavy. Most of that comes from the battery and the motor. I can't do anything about the motor, but I definitely could get a smaller battery. I mean, less lifetime, but lighter, so I don't mind about that. <clears throat> then the gearing, which I'm going to have to mess around with the, the overall smoothness of the rotations. And finally, I will also change the size of the wheels. So I'm going to try to go for bigger wheels, 4-inch specifically. I am currently running 3 inch wheels and we'll see how that changes up. Well, I'm going to change this stuff, I'll see you guys in the next one.